All right, I wanted to dig into the Hadza's teeth a little bit more because this I found really, really interesting. Um, this is an article by Peter Unger. He's a distinguished professor and director of environmental dynamics at University of Arkansas, where he heads their lab. His latest book is Evolution's Bite, a story of teeth, diet, and human origins. And this article is called it's not that your teeth are too big, your jaw is too small. This is what I was talking about before with the whole Weston A. Price thing about not eating, you know, everyone wants to be mad at their mothers for not feeding them enough liver and, um, and blaming them, you know, blaming all their jaw and teeth issues on that, you know, not enough ADK2 or whatever. But I honestly think it has a lot to do with evolution. I know some people don't like that word. I'm gonna use that word just for the sake of that this video because this is the way I understand it. Evolution within our species and, um, and also the hardness of things that you chew. But let's get into it um, a little bit more. So it says here, other animals tend to have perfectly aligned teeth. So he, he was just talking about how, you know, we have issues. <laughs> We've got issues with our teeth. Our distinct hominin ancestors did too. And so do the few remaining people today who live a traditional hunting and gathering lifestyle. I'm a dental anthropologist at University of Arkansas, and I work with the Hadza foragers of Africa's Great Rift Valley in Tanzania. The first thing you notice when you look into a Hadza mouth is that they have a lot of teeth. Most have 20 back teeth, whereas the rest of us tend to have 16. Isn't that interesting? They have more teeth than we do. Uh, I didn't know this until I was reading, you know, this, this one article. Hadza also typically have a tip to tip bite between the upper and lower front teeth, which I definitely don't have and the edges of their lower align to form a perfect flawless arch. In other words, the sizes of the Hadza teeth and jaws match perfectly. The same goes for our fossil forebears and for our nearest living relatives, the monkeys and apes. So this is what I was talking about before, that sometimes evolution gets a little screwy and we end up with mismatches because things evolve at different rates. For the Hadza, their teeth and jaws have evolved together and they match perfectly, just like other great apes. <clears throat> so why don't our teeth fit perfectly in the jaw? The short answer is not that our teeth are too large, but that our jaws are too small to fit them in. So human teeth are covered with a hard cap of enamel that forms the, from the inside out, the cells that make up the calf move forward, outward toward the, towards the eventual Surface of the tooth forms, leaving a trail of enamel behind. If you ever wondered why your teeth can't grow or repair themselves when they break or develop cavities, it's because the cells that make enamel die and are shed when the tooth erupts. That's interesting. So the sizes and shapes of our teeth are genetically pre-programmed. They cannot change in response to conditions in the mouth. Again, very interesting. This goes against the whole liver thing, right? It doesn't matter how much liver you eat. <laughs> If, if you're genetically programmed for your teeth to go a certain way, they're probably going to go a certain way. And this part about them not being able to repair themselves, I've never personally been able to repair the, my teeth. The best you might be able to do with a cavity is kind of get like a coating on the bottom that kind of stops it from spreading. But honestly, my teeth, my daughter's teeth, we've tried a lot of things in the past. We've tried the cod liver oil. We've tried the butter oil. We've tried all that stuff. And I personally have never gotten my cavities to recede. If anyone has, you can let me know in the comments. The jaw is a different story. Its size depends both on genetics and environment, and it grows longer with heavy use, particularly during childhood because of the way bone responds to stress. So Daniel Lieberman is an evolutionary biologist at Harvard, and he conducted a study on hyraxes, whatever those are, fed soft cooked food and tough raw food higher chewing resulted in more growth in the bone that anchors the teeth so yes you can blame your mother for something <laughs> you can blame her for not giving you enough carrot sticks or hard chewy meat or uh whatever else is hard to chew i don't know 
uh, taffy. <laughs> Selection for jaw length is based on the growth expected given a hard or tough diet. In this way, diet determines how well jaw length matches tooth size. It's a fine balancing act and our species has had 200,000 years to get it right. The problem for us is that for most of the time, our ancestors didn't feed their children the kind of mush we feed ours today. Our teeth don't fit because they evolved instead to match the longer jaw that would develop in a more challenging strain, strain environment. Ours are too short because we don't give them the workout nature expects us to. Now we're going to go into evidence. So there's dental anthropologists. Did you know that? Like dentists kind of uh, who work on like bones, like de dead people, I suppose. Um, and he's seen the effects by comparing urban dwellers to rural people in and around the city of Chandigarh in North India. Soft breads and mashed lentils on the one hand, coarse millet and tough vegetables on the other. He's also seen it from one generation to the next in the Pima people of Arizona following the opening of a commercial food processing facility on the reservation. Diet makes a huge difference. So this again just goes to support the idea that perhaps Wesley Price didn't have it quite right. That's my, that's my feeling about the whole thing because I, I do think it has more to do with at least the evidence that I've found when I go into like peer-reviewed research more evidence seems to support the theory of um, not exercising your jaw enough um, as opposed to fat soluble vitamins. I really haven't had much luck finding anything about fat soluble vitamins. Yes, if you don't get enough vitamin D, you'll often get these cavities type things on your teeth. So kind of like this, this is actually interesting because that kind of looks like what my daughter had. Whoops. Um, but this is what kind of happens when you get vitamin D deficiency. Yes, it, it affects your teeth, but not in the sense that they don't fit into the jaw. If you can tell, these teeth fit into the jaw at least well enough to not be super crooked. So vitamin D is important. Vitamin A might be important too, but it doesn't seem to affect, at least from what I can find, and maybe you can send me articles. Feel free to send me articles if you find, you know, enough legit stuff. But to me, the predominant theory is teeth don't fit in jaw because of evolution. We have these big teeth for chewing hard things, but then our jaw shrinks because they evolve differently and the jaw really needs to be exercised to match the teeth. Anyway, that's my video for today and I'll see you in the next one.